All right, well, good morning, folks. Uh, we are currently camped in a location uh, that you guys have probably seen me in a few times. Uh, in fact, I just did a video here this last summer. It's called Lazy with Daisy. And so I just kind of felt like this location was appropriate to just kind of talk about Daisy and um, just do kind of like a little memorial tour. And I also felt like this the reason why this was location was appropriate because I felt like it was like the last really good video that I did that had her in it. it seemed really like a good place for us to to kind of send Daisy off and share some memories of Daisy. So I just got some coffee. It's a little bit late morning. It's cloudy. It's a little bit drizzly on and off. And uh, but for the most part, pretty peaceful, pretty peaceful location, quiet. Yeah, I'm just gonna share some photos. Uh, I thought that's what we would do with this video. I went through Facebook, uh, Instagram, some other locations that I had some photos and just kind of found everything I could find on da that I've taken pictures of Daisy throughout her life. And you know, many of you guys know that I'm into photography and I do a lot of photography, but that didn't come to a little bit later uh, so I definitely have more photos of Daisy later than in life than I do of her uh, when she was very little and young, but I do have a, I do have a few. But anyways, Daisy was my third golden retriever, and my first one kind of cemented my love for the for the breed, and he lived a, a, a pretty good long life. His name was Caesar. Uh, I am there's some debate with me and my parents on how old he was when he died because we got him um, we didn't get him as a puppy he was actually we got him from a guy that got shipped off in the military and he needed to rehome him and he, he was technically my parents dog first and then they eventually gave him to me because we had such a good relationship together so uh, he was my first so when I got another dog, I decided also to get another golden retriever because I just enjoyed the breed so much that I got another golden retriever. And his name was Baron, and he was an excellent dog as well. Unfortunately, he ended up with some kind of uh, blood cancer that ended up causing him to bleed uh, internally, uncontrollably, basically. And I ended up having to put him down at a very young age and he only made it to five. And that was very devastating for me because, you know, you're just, I mean, he was just getting to that age where, you know, like he was just really coming into being just a really, really good dog. And, um, you know, our relationship was just getting stronger and stronger. And then to just have it all come to a, an end was, you know, pretty hard. And so kind of put me in a mood where I, I just wasn't ready to get another dog. I was married at the time and we had just gotten Wheeler and we and my wife uh, had brought a dog to the relationship. His name was Rex. Uh, and we don't really know for sure what Rex was. We know that the female was a Burmese mountain dog, but the um, the male was always kind of up to debate a little bit on whether it was Chow or Akita. Um, you can definitely see both of those in his face, but he was a goofy dog and fun. But um, he also uh, ended up with a um, lupus, which actually made us have to put him down at a fairly young age too. He was a bit older, but uh, he wasn't still real old. I think he was only like seven or eight years old. So we were... Um, so anyways, I got to digress now. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. But anyways, so we had those two dogs at the time. And with Baron just dying and us already having two dogs, I, I just wasn't in the mood uh, to the idea or wasn't you know, re ready to take on another dog or wasn't in the mood for another dog. But my wife uh, had found, and again, I'm not married now, uh, dating Megan, but uh, at the, my wife at the time, kind of keep things in order here, but my wife at the time, she uh, she convinced me that we should go look at these golden retriever puppies, and I was, like I said, I was very resistant because I just lost Baron, but I was also somewhat resistant because the only two uh, puppies they had left were female, and I'd never had a female 
dog before and so I wasn't really sure what my relationship with a female dog would be like because I'd always had male dogs uh, and it turned out you know obviously in the end you guys know it didn't matter at all Daisy was a fantastic dog and I, my relationship her with her was extremely strong and um, yeah the, the fact that she was female didn't, never really mattered at all so so I would definitely not even consider that as a as an issue now moving forward if I was to think about another dog down the line but anyways I was resistant to getting a dog and so I kind of begrudgingly went there to look at these two puppies and they had one puppy that was uh, she, she was pretty athletic you know just cute you know just a good-looking little puppy and then they had this other one which which was you know all puppies are cute but she was let's just say less than athletic looking and she was a little little pudgy and you know just kind of a big fluff ball and uh, so you know kind of you know looking at the two puppies you know I, I was probably leaning honestly towards the one that was more athletic if I was even going to consider one but I picked them both up and I kind of played with them both a little bit and then I went ahead and picked them both up at the same time set them on the ground in front of me at my feet and then I just walked away like 10-15 paces and you know and called for them you know and of course neither one of them had names so I was just kind of like here puppies here puppies and the the more athletic one that I was probably leaning towards just wandered off didn't pay me any attention didn't care just off with the fairies and didn't care but the the other one just came right to my feet you know pawed at my leg and I picked her up and just said yep we'll take this one and that was it and that was Daisy and I took we brought her home and of course she kind of grew up to be you know she kind of grew out of her out of her portly phase and and got you know she just was a good looking dog she just grew up to be a good looking retriever but anyways yeah so like I said earlier um, when I got I got to get ahead of myself you know Rex passed away with lupus and then we just had Daisy and Wheeler and then kind of moving along with life you know a few years later me and my wife at the time got divorced and you know Wheeler was actually technically hers she wanted Wheeler and I didn't want Wheeler. I remember, so I'm gonna, I don't think I've ever really told the story, but I didn't want Wheeler uh, at the time. So we're kind of backing up here to how we got Wheeler. And um, she finally talked me into getting him. She really wanted a red healer so bad. And I, she finally talked me into him, but it was kind of funny that I didn't want him. I thought he was gonna be a problem being a working cattle dog that he, you know, that he might be problematic and that we might have issues with him and his you know not actually using him for his intended you know breeding but he ended up like I said being a great dog um, just a really good dog and in the end when me and my ex-wife got divorced the only thing I actually asked for in the divorce was him so then I ended up with Daisy and Wheeler together and um, you know the channel was very different at the time you know, I was doing a lot more bushcraft, doing a lot more uh, kind of backpacking, primitive skills type stuff. And now I had these two dogs and I wasn't really sure how I was going to be able to integrate them into the channel because they were by this time a little bit older. They were, uh, I believe, eight or nine years old at that time. I, I'm not really sure. I'd have to really think about it and I'm not going to at the moment, but they were definitely older. And I, I realized that, you know, taking them on backpacking trips and all that wasn't really going to be a, a good plan. So that's kind of where the overlanding kind of started coming into the channel because at the time I just was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, take them truck camping. Uh, and, you know, of course I didn't know anything about overlanding. And so I was just kind of starting to research truck camping, which then eventually led me into the overland scene, which then eventually led me into the van scene um, and, you know, where we are now. But but that's kind of where the channel really evolved and you know and I feel like that's where the channel really also started gaining some legs when I started really putting the dogs in the in the videos people really enjoyed seeing them seeing my interaction with them and you know I I really enjoyed having them along they were nice company great company and it just made the time out in the woods just really enjoyable 
and um, just having them along and all the exploring and hiking and things that we did together uh, was was a lot of fun. It's starting to rain now a little bit, so you guys might be hearing some pattering on the awning. But, uh, you know, Daisy was always really sweet uh, to everybody except for Wheeler. Uh, she was kind of, she kind of bullied Wheeler a little bit, and this didn't probably ever show up in the videos. But Wheeler probably deserved it a little bit because he was always, he was always trying to hump Daisy all the time. And I, I remember all the time trying to make sure that Wheeler wasn't humping Daisy at some point during a video clip and I in fact I kind of remember a little bit funny story it wasn't I don't think funny to Casey at the time but Casey from the Coyote Works channel when we were doing a lot of stuff together I remember him being a little bit frustrated because I think he went home and and had a scene where he had been talking and explaining something and realized that didn't or didn't realize that Wheeler was humping Daisy in the background so Wheeler. <laughs> he was a little frustrated with that, but you know, looking back on it now, it's kind of funny. But uh, shortly after, you know, I thought I was going to lose Daisy uh, much earlier in life. Uh, we were out shooting some photos, and I got up on this kind of cliff face and. I didn't think anything of it. I just kind of got up on this little, I kind of climbed up onto this little like cliff face to kind of get this angle of this rock formation that we were, that me and a friend were there shooting and taking pictures of, taking landscape photos. And Daisy was really, I, I knew she was really nervous about me being up there. Like she didn't like it that I was away from her and that she couldn't get to me. And But I didn't really think too much of it because I didn't think there was anything that she could do to like get to me and I didn't think there was any danger. But she had decided that she was going to try something that never even occurred to me was a possibility and she ended up falling like 30 feet um, and hurting herself pretty bad to the point where I had to take her to the vet and I remember um, you know we had to do an emergency call and we took her into the vet and they did x-rays on her and you know luckily there was nothing broken but he could tell from the x-rays that maybe she had collapsed a lung and he kept her sedated and kept her there overnight and oh man that was a long night that was a that was a really long long night and i remember driving back to the vet that morning you know just kind of bracing myself for the fact that i may have to put her down once i got there if she didn't if she didn't show good signs of coming back around and i remember like pulling into the vet's parking lot and one of the vet attendants was outside with daisy in the grass and she saw me pull in and her ears perked up. She was lay just laying there in the grass and, and her ears perked up. And, and I mean, immediately I just knew everything was going to be all right, that she was all right. And man, what a relief that was. That was such a, such a huge relief um, that she was okay. And then, um, you know, we just kind of went along and you guys seen a lot of the videos and and then when, you know, a couple years ago, Wheeler passed away, got, ended up with a tumor in his throat. And I don't know if I ever explained this. Um, never really did a video like this for Wheeler and mainly not because I cared for him any less or that. I think just the fact that when he died, it was so unexpected. I mean, quite honestly, the way things were going with the dogs, Wheeler seemed the more healthy of the two as they got older. and my expectation was as I was going to lose Daisy before I lost Wheeler and uh, so Wheeler was a very very much a surprise to me and it hit me and I think I just buried myself with going back and just re just started filming again and started making videos and just trying to move forward and just forcing myself ahead and didn't never really talk about too much about what happened to him on the channel but he basically ended up with a tumor in his throat and the day that I put him down like I don't know it just we knew something was going wrong we had taken him to the vet I had some teeth work thinking that 
maybe he had a, I noticed he had a loose tooth one day and I thought, oh, that's why he's, you know, having problems not eating. He's got some bad teeth. He is an older dog. Let's take some teeth out. I did that. And then, um, yeah, he ended up, uh, he ended up, what we found was a, that he had a tumor in his throat and it was blocking off his airway and blocking off his, his basically his esophagus and made it hard to eat and breathe. And the day that I took him in the vet and had him put down, like he was, it had just like overnight grown to a point where he was gasping for breath. And um, so putting him down was a surprise to me, but at the same time, like there was nothing to do, like there was nothing that could be done. And so it was a very cut and dry decision. So, but with Daisy, she just kind of kept plodding along and she just kind of, even though she just kept slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. Um, she just, she just kind of kept going and seemed to be just doing okay. But here in the last couple months, she really slowed down. And the last two months I've really been struggling a lot off camera with what do I do? Is it time? Is it not time? Is she ready? Is she not ready? Um, and I and it was a there were a lot of discussions with me and Megan and about this and you know and Megan loved Daisy. Megan um, she really took Daisy on as her own and she helped me out with Daisy a lot there towards the end you know so that I could do some adventures because the hardcore adventuring the bouncing around the van became very hard on Daisy and it was a real struggle so I really appreciate the efforts that Megan um, took to take care of Daisy and to um, you know watch over her when I went on some adventures but you know it's it was a constant conversation that we were having you know of whether or not it was time to take her in it just wasn't a cut and dry decision like wheeler it wasn't a cut and dry decision like baron and it wasn't a cut and dry decision like i had with um caesar either so so it was a really hard decision to make and um but a few days ago or like a couple weeks ago before i lost her uh, i was like really it was the day before I lost her. I was up filming a video for the channel and it's a video I have not posted yet and it's a video that I don't even know if I will post because I don't know if I have the heart and stomach to kind of put it together because it has obviously Daisy in it and I just some things went wrong that day and it didn't end up being the video I wanted to make. Um, not even at the time making it I didn't wasn't making it with the intention that it was Daisy's last moments on camera but you know i just wanted to make a nice video and i just i, I had some struggles with my drone and um, i ended up kind of frustrated and you know fighting with that most of the day and that kind of became the core of the video and so that's why i'm like i don't know that i want that to be the last memory or last thoughts of daisy is you know this video of yeah there's some nice scenes of daisy in there but most of it's just me fiddling and fighting with them and, you know trying to recover my drone that I lost in a tree. So anyways, but I, I, I kind of got through that and that morning I was sitting in the van and I was having a cup of coffee and I was looking at her and I was thinking about her and I was realizing that, you know, at this point we had taken her to the vet. He had gave me some stuff that to help her with her hips because she was starting to have some pretty good problems with her hips. And it was helping, but it wasn't really helping enough. And yes, she was getting around. She could get up a little bit easier. She could get around a little bit more. But for the most part, she was just laying around. And she only was getting up to go to the bathroom and to eat. And other than that, she just was laying, you know, just laid down and slept all day. And, and like I said, the, the van life was getting rough on her. Um, traveling around she got a lot of anxiety when we drove places you know if the van was just sitting somewhere like and we had you know camp set up and she knew that we were settled she actually preferred to be in the van than be outside the van but as soon as the van started and we, she knew we were going somewhere she got a lot of stress and anxiety and in fact 
saddens me a lot because the last one of the last memories I have of her I remember starting the band that morning and looking at her and she was just shaking she was just sitting there just quivering and um, that's kind of you know that when I made the decision like it was time it was time you know for me to make the appointment so my intention was that day to go back and meet up with Megan, um, get back in the cell phone service, because I was out of cell phone service at the moment, get back in the cell phone service and call the vet and make make the final arrangements for Daisy. So we ended up taking off though, and I was in some mountains that I had was not familiar with, I had not spent much time in, and I thought, well, it's kind of a cool morning, let's at least go drive a couple roads before we leave here, and then we'll then we'll go catch back up with Megan and um, I stopped at some point to let her out because they, you know in her older age she was um, she had a hard time holding it so she was having accidents and so I would often you know on these trips let her out pretty often so I let her out and you know this was a pretty normal thing we did it all the time I'd let her out she would go do her business. I would maybe fiddle around with cameras or whatever else. And she would just, when she was done, she'd just lay down somewhere outside the van and wait for me to come get her. Um, so, you know, to me, this was a very normal situation, a very normal thing that we would do. So I, I let her out. And of course she, like I said, she had a lot of anxiety um, from the, the the drive but that didn't that was normal that didn't seem unnormal to me so I let her out got in the van was fiddling around with a few things just kind of getting some stuff organized I had some cameras still out that I wanted to get put away and uh, so I just kind of filled around for about 10 minutes or so and jumped back out to grab her so that we'd get down the road and I couldn't find her I couldn't see her anywhere and Daisy by this time had grown pretty deaf, like she couldn't really hear and you needed to get her attention, you needed to get her eyes on you in order to get her to come to you. And sometimes clapping would work, like that, that clapping sound, I don't know if it created a vibration that she was picking up or what, or something that she could pick up, but I yelled and clapped and yelled and clapped for her and yelled and clapped for her and I could not find her. We were at kind of an intersection off three roads and I, I thought, you know, did she just, start wandering down some roads so I drove all three roads about a you know a mile each direction really fast just to see if I saw her and then I when I didn't I went back to the intersection yelled and clapped for her some more started looking for her, started wandering through the woods um, after about an hour realizing that you know we really had a problem that she was really not I don't know what happened to her I called Megan she came up that evening we looked for her some more. Um, we stayed in that spot hoping that maybe she would just come back. That, you know, that around dinner time she'd just get hungry and she would just come back to where she last knew we were at. Nothing. And um, we looked for her a bunch the next day. We ran into town, grabbed some supplies, came back the very first morning. Um, at that point, you know, I, that's when I call, made the call on YouTube that I needed help. Try to get as many people up there looking for as possible. Um, you know, the first couple of days, I think I just, I don't think there was any point where I think maybe I was in the right frame of mind, but you know, I was just so stressed from, Hey, I should have called, you know, like I was thinking about it actually last night. I was thinking I should have, I should have made the call. The first day like I should have made the call the first day and got everybody up there you know I don't know I'm I mean there's a lot of things I've been looking back and I'm very angry about I'm very angry with myself about um, like I said it was very normal for us to let her out but I'm just angry that I wasn't paying attention and I had a special caller for Daisy because I'd had a couple situations where we were at a camp and where there was a kind of a river that was a little bit off in the woods or a creek a little bit off in the woods where she had kind of slowly wandered back there and 
she got herself stuck in the mud once and she managed to get herself out and come back just covered in mud. I wish I had a picture of it, but that made me realize that, you know, I needed to, you know, maybe have a collar, a GPS collar in case she did, you know, did get stuck somewhere and I couldn't find her. But I didn't think to have it on her because I knew she didn't, when I did have it on her, I knew she didn't really like it. I could tell like she, you know, felt like she was being reprimanded or something whenever the thing was on her. So I, I only put it on her when I felt like the situation warranted it. And, and I, I didn't have it on her that day. And I, because I didn't, you know, we just stopped. We'd done this a hundred times, million times, whatever. We'd done a lot. And I was just thinking, God, I got this piece of technology that would just show me where she's at right now. Just show me where she's at right now. And I didn't have, and if I would have just put it on her, if I had just had that on her, I could have found her, you know? So that, that made me very angry. Even though I, you know, knew that this was typically never an issue with her, but it made me very angry that I did not have it on her made me very angry that I did not pay attention, made me very angry that I didn't just leave when I made the decision that morning that I didn't just go straight back to Megan, to where she was at and to a place where, you know, Daisy, where Daisy was, we were camped often and Daisy was very familiar with that. I just didn't go straight back, that I, that I made that decision to just drive another road. You know, all these little things that I did that if I wouldn't have done, or would have done, you know, in the case of the caller, I wouldn't have lost her. She wouldn't have been lost. You know, in the end, right now, if everything would have worked out, she wouldn't be with us. I, I had made that decision. But losing her and not knowing what happened is very, is a thing that is really setting an, a heavy weight on me. and. I would be missing her no matter what at this point. Like, I'd still be missing her. But, you know, just not knowing what happened is a very str big struggle that I'm dealing with right now. So, and I think anybody that's lost somebody where their, where, where questions linger can totally understand or lost something important to them that where questions linger can totally understand that. It's a, it's a tough loss and, um, yeah, so anyways, um, yeah, I don't know that it'd be a whole lot easier right now knowing I'm trying to take in some comfort that she made her own choice and she made her own decision and I'm hoping, you know, kind of just living in the, in the fat dream world that she just went somewhere, found herself a nice comfortable place to lay down and pass away on her own terms so we did have a cute uh, quite a few people come up and look for her and all those people you know they worked very hard it was very hard terrain it was very steep i don't have any footage from it because my focus and interest was strictly on finding her so videoing was not at all in any interest to me so we, um, but they worked very hard. They worked very hard on trying to find her. So I really appreciate those that came and, uh, he did my, you know, kind of heeded my call. So thank you very much for those people. Anyways, folks, I don't, I hope you enjoyed the photos that I shared. They were in no particular order and, um, it's definitely, you know, with both dogs now gone, it's definitely an end of an era. It's definitely feels like a piece of my life that um, they were the final kind of puzzle or piece of a life that, you know, I had left. They were still a piece I very much enjoyed. And now I, you know, kind of looking to what direction I want to go next and We'll talk about more of that kind of stuff in a future video. You know, again, this was just 
course is kind of about Daisy and you know a little bit about Wheeler too you know because like I said they were kind of a pair and I hopefully take comfort that you know whatever happened that they are together again and um, and that they'll just be hanging out wait for me